Father God, as we go into your word, as we go into your message, as we go into uh, we go into your presence once again. Fill us with your spirit. Fill us overflowing with your spirit. Lord, let the people listening on Facebook and and the people here in person, let them feel your presence. We know you live in us, but Lord, let us feel that presence. Let your sanctuary be filled with your presence. Let it touch our hearts and our minds and our soul to not just hear the word, but become doers of the word. That we don't just hear it and let it dwell inside of us, but we take it out into the marketplace, into our schools, into the world, to the streets, to the by bayous, into the darkest places with no fear because the Holy Spirit has us. So Lord, give us this time of unconceivable, uninterrupted word of God. Let our spirits be at peace and our mind be on you. In Jesus' name, amen. Everybody said amen. Amen. You guys can have a seat or start running around doing jumping jacks. No, don't do that. It'll just get hotter. You shook your head. Tommy, you shook your head. <laughs> hey, we are in a series called um, The God We All We All Need to Know. And it came out of, this series came out of um, uh, a devotional I was reading, and it also, but, it, but more importantly, it came out, it came from you. I asked you guys during Easter, what do you guys, I gave you guys a survey of what do you guys want to hear preached on? What do you guys want to hear, um, what do you guys want to learn about? And, and, and the top answer was, we want to learn more about the Holy Spirit. And I love talking about the Holy Spirit. Because if I'm supposed to feed my sheep and I feed you meat, but yet you're a vegetarian, am I, are you going to be able to eat? No. So if I don't know what you guys need inside of you and I feed you the wrong food, it can make you sick, right? I mean, it, does, it may not be beneficial for you. So by me asking you guys what you guys need helps pastor understand the needs of the church. Does that make sense? The way you need to get fed spiritually. So this series came a lot from you guys too. Um, and like I said, it's all about getting to know the Holy Spirit. And it just happened to coincide with Pentecost. I kind of planned that. <laughs> it wasn't by the Holy Spirit. I just kind of... I did not plan that you guys wanted to know more about the Holy Spirit though. It, the planning part of it about being Pentecost and all that, that just all kind of happened. Right? See, we talk, We have talked about in the last couple of weeks that the Holy Spirit, he's a person, that he's a spirit, he has a soul, that he helps us, that he knows the future, right? He gives us benefits. Some of those benefits are power, love, fruit, and the gifts of the Holy Spirit, right? We talked about those. He, he's, and, and that's the thing, he's always here. That's one of the benefits that he's always here with us. And God's word we learned about his, is his voice, right? The more we read his word, the more we hear his voice. The more we pray, the more we hear his voice. Does that make sense? And we need to become more familiar with that voice. How many of us need to become more familiar with that voice, right? And that these are the ways, the practical ways to be able to do that, to be able to draw near to him so he can help us live a righteous life because he lives inside of us, amen? So, I, you guys all know already, today is what day in the church? Pentecost Sunday, right? And, and here's the beauty of it. It wasn't because Jesus said, wait, I'm going to send somebody, but wait, I'm going to give you my spirit. That's not, the beauty of it is, if you go back to the Old Testament, we got young people in this room, and we got some old people in this room. Then you got me, that never ages. But if you go back to the Old Testament, that's where the word started from. 
And people are like, well, the Old Testament has nothing to do with the New Testament. The, New, the Old Testament has everything to do with the New Testament. Because it all points back to Jesus. It all points back to how good our God is. It all points back to this prophecy in Joel chapter 2. It says, do me a favor, stand up. I know it's hot. I want to keep you guys awake today. Because it's about to spare. Stand up for the reading of the word. Joel 2 Verse, verse 28 to 32 says, But then after doing all things, all those things. See, right before this, I don't know if you guys know if you ever read Joel, the book of Joel. Right before this prophecy, they literally, he sent all kinds of plagues and harm onto the Israelites. He said, if you don't do this, this, and this, this is what's going to happen. And then, this is the beauty of God and how much he loves us and cares for us and wants to um, pour his love into us. He says, then after doing all those things, I will pour out my spirit upon all people. And he didn't say just a couple people. He said all people. He says, your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams. Your young men will see visions, and in those days I will pour out my spirit, even on the servants, the men, and the women alike. Amen? You guys can have a seat. Did I put the next verse up, or no? In Joel, I can't remember if I did. But if I didn't, this is what verse 32 says. But everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. See, it says everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. It doesn't say if I call on the name of Allah. It doesn't say if I call on the name of Buddha. It doesn't call if I call on the name of uh, uh, Hinduism. It doesn't call if I'm an atheist or a, a, a separatist. It doesn't, I call on the name of Jesus and I am saved. Amen? And because we call on the name of Jesus and says, I will give you my spirit. When that, this prophecy came true, when Jesus said, just wait. And I'm going to give you something special. And this is why the Old Testament is so important for the New Testament. Because you learn the heart of God. You learn of who truly the God is. Amen? And, and what happened on the day that this came true. If I asked you what was Pentecost about, what would everybody tell you? Holy Spirit. But what I, we would say that... that Tongues flew from heaven, and people spoke in, 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 in different languages, and walls were shaken, and 3,000 people got saved. And that's all true. Because that's exactly what it says in Acts chapter 2, verse 1. It says, on the day of Pentecost, all believers were meeting together in one place. Suddenly there's, there was a sound from heaven like a roaring of a mighty windstorm, and it filled the house where they were sitting. And what happened then? What looked like flames of to or tongues of fire appeared and settled on each of them. And every person present was filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking in other languages as the Holy Spirit gave them the ability. We are a Pentecostal church. I do not, I never understood what Pentecost meant as a child until I got baptized in the Holy Spirit. And I was like, oh man, I know what Pentecost is about now. But that's a small part of what the Holy Spirit that did that day. I don't know if you guys realize the miracle that happened that day and what truly, truly happened. Yeah, speaking in tongues is cool, but that's for my edification. It's not for yours unless somebody interprets it. The coolest part was, and what I think we all overpass and, and we bypass is the Holy Spirit for the first time in 2000, over 2,000 years from the time I, however long that the earth has been here, but we got 2,000 years of writings, right? Over 2,000 years of writing about God. What happened that day since Adam and Eve is he gave us his Holy Spirit again. He said, I'm going to do this. I'm going to give you my spirit. And that day, that's what makes it so special. Because he, that, his promise came true. Salvation didn't just come, but he gave us his spirit to live inside of us to do the things that we need to do. He said, I'm going to write my words on your heart 
And literally, when you are born, I don't care who you are, when you are born and you're a baby and you're growing up, there comes a certain age that we know right from wrong. And we know when to make a decision and we know when not to make a decision. And that is part of the Holy Spirit leading us. We don't say that to people because they'll be like, no, that's just my kind. No, that's the Holy Spirit. God created you. He creates that. We just sing, He created the heaven, He created it all, and he, we get to glorify Him. So I don't, you can like that, disagree with me. I really don't care. That's what I believe. And I hope you believe it too because the whole, He said, I'm going to give you my Holy Spirit. And as a child, it says he knows us in the womb. He builds us in the womb. He's growing us in the womb. That his spirit now lives inside of us because of this day. Amen? There's the miracle. It wasn't the tongues and, I, and it wasn't the prophesying. And he says all those things are going to fade away. But what's not is the word of God and his son and salvation. Amen? And it, I, I, how many of you even knew that Pentecost was a Jewish feast? And it celebrates Moses receiving the Ten Commandments uh, on the Mount Sinai. And, and so think about the laws. What, 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 why was he on Mount Sinai? He was getting the laws. And what was he going to do with these laws? He was going to bring them down to the Israelites and say, you need to follow these laws. How many of us like laws? How many of us like rules? How many of us like, like following them? Because you realize, before he even stepped off that mountain, what did they do? They had a party, and they built a calf, and they were going to worship this calf before the law even came down. So why would they think that they could follow these laws without the grace of God? Without the salvation of Jesus without the Holy Spirit living and indwelling inside of us. Amen? See, because of the Holy Spirit, instead of being held, it, 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 the, the laws are beautiful and they're great, and, I, and, and if you really read them and understand why they were there, they were to set us apart from the world because we were supposed to live a certain way for God. It wasn't for the world. It was, I'm chosen by God. I'm supposed to be his representative, and I'm supposed to be his hands and feet, and this is the way I'm supposed to live. I know I'm not going to do it perfect, and this is the, great, the greatness of the Holy Spirit, because he knows we're not going to. And because of that, he still loves us. It's a, and it's impossible to, uh, to live under the law, but we can now walk with the Holy Spirit and have according to the law and the, the love of Jesus in our hearts, right? Jesus says in Matthew 22, verses 35 to 40, he says, one of them, an expert in the religious law, tried to trap him with these questions. Teacher, which is the most command, what's the most important commandment of the law of Moses? And Jesus replied, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart. See, this is what I was talking about. The law was about loving Jesus, loving God to live the life that God wanted us to be separate from, right? So love you with all my heart, your soul, your mind, your spirit. This is the first and greatest of the commandments, and second is equally important. Everybody read that with me. Love your neighbor as yourself. It says the entire law and all the demands of the prophets are based on these two commandments. See, with the Holy Spirit, we get to love the law. We get to love others like Jesus loved us. We get to forgive others like Jesus forgave us. We get to use his grace and mercy because of the Holy Spirit. This is good news because we can't live righteously without the power of the Holy Spirit. Do you realize that, right? Because, because of what happened in the upper room on that day of Pentecost, we can now live righteously and just start understanding the will of God for our lives. See, the Holy Spirit allows us to live righteously, and when we live righteously, he starts speaking to us. And when he starts speaking to us, I'm going to go on this uh, 
progressive tangent today of teaching you because the will of God. When we get the Holy Spirit, our will changes and his will comes becomes our will. And, and, and I have so many, like I said, has asked, what's the will of God in my life? What's the will? I don't know. But I do know, knowing his Holy Spirit, that I can learn the will of God. And I can listen for the will of God. I think one of the biggest struggles we all face is figuring out God's light for our lives. Am, am I right? Like, am I on the right track? Am I doing what I'm supposed to be doing? Am I doing good? Wanting to be in God's will is a very, very good thing. And when you choose to be in God's will and you choose, life doesn't get any easier. It gets harder. It does. It just gets harder. In a good way. Because now you have a purpose. And you can focus. And you can love. And it's, 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 just, it's not a bad thing. So don't just get discouraged if you don't understand God's will for your life at the moment. Keep searching, keep asking, keep knocking, the word says. And you will find, it says. If you're struggling right now or confused, I want to uh, tell you something that can change your life forever. It's small, but it's huge. Someone is living inside of you who knows the will of God for you. Did you catch that? Someone's living inside of you that knows the will of God for you, and his name is the Holy Spirit. Now, there's a couple wills of God. There's a will of God that comes in two forms. The first one is the general will of God. And then there's a second one. The general will of God is the law, like I talked about. These are the, these are the laws. This is what the general, general will of God and what he wants us to do and, and to live. So if you ever say, I don't know God's will, yes, you do. You know his will. Now, the second one, though, is specific will. That's your destiny. That's your purpose in life. And, and, and what, what, so your purpose could be all over the place. But your true purpose is to serve the maker, it said. To love me with all my heart, soul, spirit, and body, right? That is the specific will of God in, in, in a point. Because you can do that in any avenue. You could be an artist. You can be a singer. You can be a, a, a teacher. You can be a healthcare professional. That's the specific will of God. Or should I marry this person? Or should I not get this person or those are very specific that you need to have that conversation with God I can't give you the answers for that I can pray with you I can direct you but I can't give you those answers that's why having that relationship with the Holy Spirit is so important does that make sense it says in John 16 13 However, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. If you're looking for the specific will of God in your life, if it's not true to the word, then you probably shouldn't do it. If it's not true to honor and give God glory, then you probably shouldn't do it. It says he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will tell you things to come. He will tell you the future if you listen. He will guide you down that path if you listen, and if you ask, and if you pray. And sometimes it happens, boom. And then other times it takes a while. Am I right? But God has a specific will for your life, and you can know that, that is when you get to know the Holy Spirit and open your heart to hear his voice. I want to pray this prayer as I go farther into the message. Um, just bow your heads really, really quick. Holy Spirit, I'm just, I'm thankful that you live inside of us and that you guide us into God's will for our lives. So Lord, open up our hearts today and, and right now to your voice, to be able to hear your voice, to know, let us know the plans that you have for our lives today, Father God. 
Speak into us today, Father God, through your spirit to guide us, Father God, to show us that will that you have for us. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. All right. So to, 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 to segue into the specific will of God, it says, John 16, 14 says, His Spirit says, He says, The Holy Spirit, His Spirit, will glorify me. So when you're talking about specific will of God, if it's not going to glorify God, okay, so if I'm going to go murder somebody, and you're asking, Lord, is this a specific thing I should be doing in my life? Is that glorifying God? Lord, I'm going to go steal this because I don't have the funds to pay for it. Is that glorifying God? And I know there's situations in people's lives that there's a fine line between good and evil and walking the line. And that's the specific will of God. Because it's easy to bear off that and go, I can still glorify God. We can justify pretty much anything, am I right? And talk ourselves into it, am I right? But if it truly doesn't glorify God because he tells us he's going to give us the truth, does that make sense? And if it doesn't glorify him, you probably shouldn't do it in any aspect of your life. Because when we do things that are not of God, that are sinful and cause us to do harm, maybe not up front to do harm, but in the long run to other people, that's it caused harm, right? That's called, my second point is grieving the spirit. So grieving the spirit. Have you ever lost connection with somebody? Maybe, oh, I was on the phone with Jerry yesterday. And the reception was horrible. So I just hung up on him. Because I was losing reception. I, right? I lost connection with this guy. I was just like, I'll call him back at a different spot, right? Have you ever lost somebody you love and it hurts and you grieve? We've all lost somebody in this life, right? It's no fun. You had a situation in your life. Maybe you lost a job. Your son might uh, got in trouble with the law. Maybe... You got in, in, in some trouble at work or something, and you grieve for that, and you get upset over that, right? So does the Holy Spirit. He grieves over us. He 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 gets sad um, when we do things that don't glorify Him. And there's different examples of times when intimacy is lost in a relationship. If you don't talk to your spouse or your child or your loved ones over a time period, what happens? A gap happens. You learn. You lose connection with them, right? You lo lose that fellowship, that love, that, and that's what happens. Did you know that the Holy Spirit, Spirit, excuse me, He experiences times of grief too. The Word says it. He Ephesians four thirty says, "And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, with whom you are sealed for the day of redemption." See, when we get we give our lives to Christ, we get sealed with the redemption, sealed for the day of redemption. But Paul warns, says, he, he says, do not grieve the Holy Spirit. So Paul warns us of doing, see, when you read that, you say, oh, that sounds great, it sounds pretty. What happens is, I didn't read the first verses before that. The first verses before that warns us of things not to do that are going to cause grief to the Holy Spirit. And if you go to verse 25 to 29, it says, So stop telling lies. I just talked about this today. If, if it's not glorifying God, we need to stop it. Stop telling lies. Let us tell our neighbors the truth, for we are all parts of the same body. And don't sin by letting you get anger get control of you. Don't let the sun go down while you are still angry, for anger gives a foothold to the devil. If you're a thief, quit stealing. Instead, use your hands for good hard work and then give generously to others in need. So stop. These things grieve the Holy Spirit. Don't use foul or abusive language. Let everything you say be good enough and helpful so that your words will be an encouragement to those who hear them. See, Paul explains that what causes that grief, the lying, the stealing, the cheating, the corrupt language. In other words, sin causes the Holy Spirit to grieve. Does that make sense? 
and it makes his heart hurt. It's not because he's legalistic, because he's not. Or he doesn't want us to have fun. I heard Billy Joe, is Billy Joe singing um, Only the Good Die Young? Okay, that is the worst song I've ever heard in my life. And I used to like Billy Joe. And I heard it this weekend, and I'm like, me and Tracy, I was on, on the top of my house, like on the second floor, Tracy was on the first floor cleaning, and I was on the, and we had music playing, and that song came on, and I, I heard it during the week, and I turned it off, and then I heard it again on Saturday, and I yelled down, that's the worst song ever, and she, five minutes later, as it's still playing, she didn't hear me, yells, this song is horrible, because it truly is. Good don't die young, we die when God calls us. And it talks about being religious in that, and only the, only the good die young. No, no, no. I'd rather be a sayer. Uh, it's not a good song. And why did I talk, bring that up? Because our, the things in that song, truly, as I listen to it, would grieve the Holy Spirit. Because we're supposed to be doing the opposite of that. I, I, and he's, he is about having fun. When you help somebody, and you tell the truth to somebody, and you give them something, what happens to you? You feel good. You get these endorphins inside of you, like, man, that's so cool. Now, that shouldn't be the motive behind it. The motive behind it should be because God gave us first, so I'm going to be generous with my time, my giving, my money, my resources. Why? Because I get to glorify God doing this. Does that make sense? And the byproduct of that is that people see Christ coming out of you then. And it makes you feel good. Does that make sense? I love that we're saved through grace. Because all the good works in the world that I could do would never save my soul. I'm saved because God loved me so much that he gave me his son. And I didn't have to do anything for it. It was a present. And all I had to do is receive that present. Does that make sense? On the flip of that, it says, though, that I was made to do good works. And if I do those good works, it says that I get to glorify God for that. And that's what makes my heart truly happy, is when I get to be his hands and feet and glorify God. It says, for everyone, and see, this is why grace is so important and this is why you can't get down on yourself every day because you're never ever going to be perfect it says in romans 3 23 for everyone has has sinned we have all fallen short of god's glorious standard doesn't mean we shouldn't try to achieve that and to live by the gold standard it just means don't you sin you're gonna wake up tomorrow you're gonna sin but I have the Holy Spirit to help me now not to. And it says in Ephesians, Paul writes again, see, Paul writes a lot about sinning. You know why? Because Paul was a sinner. <laughs> Paul understood sin. Paul had people murdered. <laughs> but God still loved them and then used them. And it says in Ephesians, he's so rich in kindness and grace that he purchased us, uh, purchased our freedom with the blood of his son and forgave our sins. Amen? And then go back to Romans 8.1. It says, there, there is therefore no con condemnation to those who are in Jesus Christ. So you don't have to condemn yourself because you have sinned. If it's habitual, if you keep doing it and keep doing it and keep doing it and keep doing it and keep doing it, so you keep smoking, you keep shooting up, you keep getting drunk, you keep snorting, you keep alcohol, you, those are habitual. You overeat, you get depressed, you use pills, you get anxiety, and you deal it with it through other means. Those grieve the Holy Spirit. Those are called inequ inequities. That means you can't do it on your own. And I've been through, I've mentioned all those things, and I've been through them all. And the only thing that ever got me out and pulled me out of the muck was the Holy Spirit, was the salvation of Jesus Christ, was the cross, and still is, and will be, and forever will be. Amen? So you can't do it on your own. You can't find the specific will of God when you can't hear the will of God because you keep doing the same things that you did before you knew God. 
Jesus said to repent of your sins and be born again and to renew your spirit daily. I can't do that by shooting up. I can't do that by drinking a, a pint of whatever every day. I can't do that with running to my mare, to, 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 to my sorrows and eating uh, 10 pounds of food every day and ex expect to be healthy and, and not sick, right? I can't do that. And that's grieving. When, you, when it's habitual and you can't break it, you need to go see somebody. First, you need to go see God. And then if you need professional counseling, I'm all good with professional counseling. If I can help you, I will. I, I, over the years, I've lost, um, what's that word I'm looking for? I, I kind of tell you, get off your butt and go change. Uh, empathetic. I'm not always the most empathetic man in the world. Because I've been through so many things, and the only thing that ever changed me was to get up and go change it. Right? And when we do change it, and we do allow the inequity in our lives, the habitual ones, to leave, because we're all going to get angry every now and then, and we're all, right, those are just normal. But when they're habitual and continuously, that truly grieves the Holy Spirit. But when you allow the Holy Spirit to come inside and just to lead you, the third point is, He sets us free. He will set us free. It says, then, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven and forgive them of their sins and restore their land. That's not Jesus saying that. That's from the Old Testament, God saying it before Jesus came on this earth. He says, if you humble yourselves, if you pray, if you seek, if you turn from your wicked ways, I want to end. If you guys could all stand. Mama, if you want, you can get the kids ready to come over. I truly believe in the deepest of my soul and the deepest of my spirit that everybody, everybody has a chance to change. I don't care what kind of change you need in your life, you have the ability in you through the Holy Spirit to change. You, God made us in His creation. God made us for His glory. God made us in His image. And His image is not bad. When He made us humans and gave us birth in our lungs and breath in our lungs, uh, he said, this is good, not once, but twice. He only said th good about animals and plants and all the heavens and the stars. He only said good once. When he made us humans in his light, in his look, in his feel, in the way we do things, he said, that is good. That is good. Because he made you good, not evil. And if you humble yourself, can I get some prayer warriors up here? My right, Christina, can you come pray? Beth, can you come pray? We're pretty much done. You don't. They can figure it out. Thank you, God, for one day of full technology. Right? Is it all going good? Can I get a couple? Yeah, Bobby Jean, you want to come pray with people? Who else we got in here? Is Will here? I will pray with people. He says, if you humble yourself, and if you ask him to set you free, he will set you free. He says, the truth will set you free. Amanda, do you mind just humming in the background? Do you mind, or something? I, I, I know I'm throwing you on the spot, but, um, oh. Whatever, good. I do this a lot, I'm sorry. But I want you to take time with God right now. We're going to open up the altars for a couple minutes. We're going to pray uh, over you. If, if you need something, if you need something prayed over, 
I want you to come up. If you have an addiction, if you need change broken in your life, if you need healing in your life, if you need a financial break, if you need God in your life, in one aspect or another, in your life, these altars are open today. And it, 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 I don't know what you're going to sing, but whatever you want to, I don't, don't sign my letter. The goodness of God, no. But we're going to open up these altars right now, take a couple of minutes to pray, let the Spirit move, because we kept asking for the Spirit to be in this room today, right? If I don't give Him time to work, it's pointless. Does that make sense? So, men, women over here, men over here, and, 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 that, and that's just, let the Spirit do some magic. His magic. And when I say magic, I don't mean magic. Let, let us let the Holy Spirit do what the Holy Spirit does. Amen? And Amanda will be getting ready to sing. So the, the officers are open, we'll anoint you, we'll pray for you. Don't be shy, don't be afraid. Science. 